when I do blue ball coaching, a lot of people ask me how to get better generally. Uh, this video is going to talk about two key concepts that I teach. Number one, drive management, and number two, the long stall. If you want to get better, watch this video. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Davo. I've been playing Blood Bowl for around about 10 years. I've been ranked up to number two in the world on tabletop. Um, and I'm in Blood Bowl 2, I have one of the highest win rates in the open ladder. Um, around a year ago, I started coaching people uh, to be better players, and recently I started reflecting on what I've been teaching. Um, with that, I want to cover two concepts that I've been teaching out. Uh, the first of those is drive management. Uh, this is the idea that you want to score when you choose and not when your opponent wants to choose. So think of this question uh, and assume that everyone can always convert their offense. Pick any team in Blood Bowl, other than a stunty team, and then ask yourself this question. What turn would you like to score on? Now try and play out the game uh, to full time. So for example, if you chose uh, just then to score on turn four, um, they would then choose to go and score on turn eight. In the second half, they get the ball and they would then choose to go and score on turn 16, which converts into a, two, a one, two loss for you. Um, now imagine you change your answer then. Imagine you choose to score on turn 8. Um, they've now got the question of whether they can pull off a one turn score. Um, and now think about what's going to happen in the second half. They're going to have re be presented with a choice. That choice is either going to be to go and score quickly, so make it 1-1, then give you the ball back so you can convert and win the game 2-1, or if they didn't like that choice, then they're going to try and stall an 8 turn score out themselves and then they're going to try and draw the game or if they don't convert their score, lose the game. So in both scenarios, you're going to either win or draw the game. Now, here's the interesting question. Whatever race you've just picked and whatever turn you decided to score on, go through and think about instead of playing Wood Elves or Chaos or Humans or whatever you picked first time around, go and pick all the different races and ask, you that same, ask yourself that same question. Does your answer change on what turn you would choose to score in if you start the game? I'll let you ponder that. You might want to pause the video at this point and have a think. Uh, I'm going to put the answer to the question uh, in the comments section below. Now, knowing this piece of information rather than just being aware of it, which is the correct answer being score on turn eight with all races all of the time, um, it should mean that you can now start to plan out your drive um, more effectively. Um, it also means that on defense, you should now be able to consider that you've actually got two ways of winning uh, the half. Um, first way is to make them score early, um, because then you go and convert your drive and it's 1-1. Or, second choice, just don't let them score. Um, since both ends uh, end out in a tie, either 1-1 or 0-0. Um, and that then ups you in the driving seat for the start of the game. Now, let's watch the first half of the game I've got uh, preloaded here and we'll be able to use this knowledge. Right, while the game's loading, I just wanted to let you know that this game was played live on Twitch. Um, we stream every Tuesday evening from uh, 6 p.m. UTC, and then every Saturday and Sunday evening from around about 3 p.m. UTC. Um, if you wanna come and hang out, please do so. Uh, the link to the Twitch is on uh, in the comment section below. Um, you can hang out, ask questions, uh, whatever you want. This particular game was playing as uh, Undead versus Wood Elves. Uh, and the two teams are very, very uh, vanilla. In fact, I don't think you've got any skills on them at all. Um, I'm playing as the Wood Elves and I'm choosing uh, to kick, I think. Uh, no, the Undead just chose to receive. So, just taking that first thing into account, um, what I'm looking to do here is, and we pause this for a second, because I think this is worth talking about setup. Um, I know that I want the Undead team to either either score on turn four or five, or six maybe, because I can easily convert a three-turn score, or I want them to not score at all. So I'm fine with them creating space uh, and charging down one of the flanks, um, but if I can go and put pressure on the ball immediately, maybe I can turn them over and score. So the first thing I'm looking at here is setup. Can I charge down a flank uh, and go and put pressure on the ball before it's even um, before it's even formed into a cage, which is why I'm wide here. Because looking at these players on the far right-hand side, um, we've got multiple ways that we can enter the field, um, and he's got to try and cover them all off. I'm also left players in the far left wide zone, 
so that if he covers the white quite heavily, uh, wide zone on the right quite heavily, I may be able to sneak around on the left. Um, and then the final point, which is an offset line of scrimmage. Um, if we get a perfect defense, I can move away from the mummies for sure, and then I won't take two mighty blow hits. It doesn't always happen, but when it does come up, it's quite nice. So, not a great kick for the Wood Elves, unfortunately. It's gone shallow, uh, and you're, you're gonna find that the undead should be able to cage this up quite nicely. Uh, the other problem with this kick is that it's also right near the line of scrimmage, so the line of scrimmage players will be able to form a, a protective shield around the front of the cage, um, so effectively his entire team should be connected together. Now, uh, while he's playing this through, uh, first thing that you should probably look for is, uh, uh, whenever you're playing your turnout, uh, is the ball safe? If it's not safe, you should probably go and make it safe. So, um, while our opponent here has quite nicely put a zombie near the ball, um, is it impossible for the elves to get rid of that zombie? I'll leave you to think that through. So, ghouls come forward. Um, could he also have been blocking with the whites? Maybe. Uh, just for a little bit of added security. And also, not only added security, but added knockdown chance. So, drops ball. Does he re-roll it? Yes, he does. He's got the ball. And now the ball is now near the line of scrimmage. So we'll just pause this for a second and look at the uh, look at the pitch uh, situation. Uh, the elves have lost one out line elf already. They've got two more stunned, uh, and the undead are looking pretty strong here. Um, there's nothing particularly um, weak in the in the play. If the wood elves want to charge in and try and get a one dice, then they're going to have to base up one of the edges because they can leap in. Maybe cancel out these two at the front here um, and leap into this square here. But then the, retri the retrieval afterwards pretty sucks. I've also got to roll uh, five plus after my three plus leap because I only get to knock it down on a power or both down. It's not really great, is it? I only got two re-rolls and do I want to go heavy in the first turn? Probably not. So the best way of doing dealing with this is to start splitting these players off uh, and picking on them um, and trying to put a bit of pressure on. So um, what we'll do is we'll hold the center um, we will invite him to run down one of the flanks and we'll start picking off the zombies so that we can then start putting pressure on the cage in a few turns time. I don't actually think I execute this particularly well, but never mind. So we get the knockdown on the zombie. That now lets us run through a few players through here. We can start thinking about how we're going to put some pressure on. So I think that fight should have been further around. Um, what answer is coming around the back? This is the idea that I really don't mind if he chooses to charge a load of players forwards because, remember, I don't care if he scores on turn four. So I can afford to give away this space. Um, I also know that the zombies are not very fast. So if he takes the bait and runs down here, um, I can probably start splitting team out. Look, this one becomes isolated. This one is now based. This one's going to struggle to get involved. So there's three players we've effectively removed from the drive. Uh, the mummies are also not very fast. So he's taking the, taking the space and bringing himself forward. Um, when I talked about the key concept in the video intro, think about whether or not you need to be driving this forward this early. Do you need to be taking the space or do you want to just consolidate? What turn do you need to go forward uh, to score? And that question is the same for all races, but the answer is different because it depends on what race you're playing. For example, you're playing as Wood Elves, how many turns can you score in? The answer is probably two. Playing as Skaven, probably two. Playing as Dwarves, probably five or six. Um, so what turn do you need to start progressing is based on how you, not just anybody, how you choose to play that team and how far, how far forward you can get. So we'll just pause this for a second because um, if we look at this, actually, um, we've got the ability to put pressure on. So he's left these squares here on the, on the side of the ghoul open. And if we can get a player into one of them and then blitz from the other, we can get two dice on the ball. Um, I'm taking this on if I can use a ward answer. So let's just map out the squares from the ward answer and work out how many squares that is. Can we um, pl pl plot a course to score, uh, to try and sack with the ward answer? And can we also plot a course to try and use either the lineman or the catcher um, as the uh, assist? And I think the answer to that question is yes as you'll see graphically in, on the screen in just a second. <clears throat> so 
So the other thing that we now need to do with the turn is then we may as well take the blocks that are available to us because if this doesn't play out and we don't get the knockdown we need, then what we can then do is start continually isolating out the zombies. So I am taking these blocks first, even though this is not the most important thing this turn. And the reason for that is because if I don't take these blocks, I won't be able to take them at all. So it is a subtle difference. Um, it's probably being a little on the greedy side, but actually it's me hedging my bets. So here comes the catcher. He's now stood in, uh, in the square to do the assist. One answer dodges through. Uh, so that's dodge, dodge. Luckily for me, dodge doesn't proc. Um, go for it. And we, get a, we don't get a knockdown. Now, I wouldn't be disappointed with myself, and I cho obviously choose not to, because you can see I've selected to take the dodge. Um, but I think you could have re-rolled that. The problem with re-rolling it with only two re-rolls is that really you're holding the other re-roll back for your turn eight one turn, if you don't make this work. So if you decide to use your re-roll management yeah, here, this is re-roll management, then you need to be very aware of what your other re-roll or re-rolls are gonna be used for. So I chose not to re-roll it because I want to make sure that I might get another chance and I might want to use re-roll that later, um, or it's just something goes wrong and I need, I need to re-roll it. So that's me hedging my bets. <clears throat> um, best thing I can do now is to take the other block on the zombie. Uh, and try and make sure that we can start slowing things down. Uh, and sadly for me, we only got one knockdown out of three uh, this turn. So I've got to follow that up to really keep the zombie based. And that's that's about the lot. That's nothing more I can do really here. Um, if I make this dodge, I could have double based the white. Uh, sadly, we didn't make it, and now the white's got a free hit. But look at the board state. Look at what's going on. One, two, three, four players, all isolated and not being part of the cage. And so it's actually only one, two, three, four, five, six players plus the ball carrier. Um, and therefore the undead team is going to start to feel a little bit pinched. And this is all because the undead coach actually progressed um, early and has not brought his entire team with him. Now he's going to get out of this. He's going to get out of this okay. Um, he's going to get a cage put together. Um, and it looks like he's going to go for the anti-leap cage. No, oh, no he's not. Uh, anti-leap cage, of course, is having a player stood behind the ball carrier uh, and then a player there. So you've got an elongated X cage. Chose not to take that. So that player now became further away from the ball, uh, although he's setting up a two dice block. And then we've got this there. Okay, my turn three. Uh, we'll just pause this and quickly look at it from a, from a strategic point of view. Um, what's wrong with this turn? I'll let you think about that for a second. And the correct answer, of course, is that there's a cage corner that's based. So although it is a strength five cage corner, it doesn't have any support around it. So the Wood Elves will be looking at that thinking, well, if I can move that out of the way, um, again, we can have two dice on the ghoul. All I need to do is stand in front of where the mummy is currently, uh, which I'll highlight for you on the screen now. Um, and I can then two dice that down, you know, cancel out the assist of the white or the zombie, um, and then get two more dice. And even if this doesn't work, what we have got here is the, te the undead team is all split up. So I can probably, probably make this team score relatively soon. And this is all, uh, or largely, to do with the way that the I've laid out my turn and the undead team has chosen to position in response to that. So we'll now see these two Wood Elf linemen over here come and, come and assist. So we are looking for the knockdown on the mummy here. If we get the knockdown on the mummy, um, then we are golden. That's a shame. So the linemen can now get into that square, um, but uh, we didn't get the knockdown, so that's a little bit of a problem. So all we choose to do now is go for it. What we can do, of course, is now leap into the square behind the ghoul. And this is two more dice. So this gives us four dice on the ball so far. We now roll the required dice roll. And unfortunately, the ball did not go where we wanted to go, but I did choose to go and put another tackle zone on the ball. And at this point, uh, in the stream chat, um, and as I say, we do stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, sorry, Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday. The stream chat did ask me why I didn't actually choose to go and pick the ball up. Um, we hadn't used dodge. Um, and I could well have dodged on there on a, uh, on a four plus and tried to pick the ball up on a four plus. The actual answer was that because if dodge procs, 
or I have to use the team reroll to pick the ball up. I'm now stood here um, against the block player that I can't dodge out again because I realistically can't dodge there on a 3 plus and then dodge there on a 2 plus to get out. So I was stuck. Um, and if he knocks me over, then there's a very high chance that uh, we get punished. Uh, and I therefore chose not to um, uh, to go after the ball. But I do think the, the undead team here are under enough pressure, or under enough pressure, that we'll hit one of our two victory conditions. We'll either have it off him, um, or he'll score. Unless, of course, uh, this is a stun. I, I didn't know that was a stun, but it is uh, disappointing that that was a stun, because it uh, means I've got no pressure on the front of the cage anymore. Somehow, this war dancer's managed to get two dice punched. It's a shame. I think we must have made a mistake earlier in the turn, which I haven't called out, but there must have been a mistake earlier in the turn. So, what we need to do now is now go and put pressure on the ball. These zombies are way out of position, so all we need to do is go and apply some pressure to it. Now, the idea here is that if we block here, we can stand here and have two dice on the ghoul, bounce it uh, onto the ball, uh, and then see what happens to that ball. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we rolled a one in nine, and therefore are unable to do that. In hindsight, I think I probably could have just not done the blitz there, uh, tagged out that same zombie, and then done a one dice block with the, um, with the ward answer for, for very similar results. And now it's not looking great for the Wood Elves. We've had two turns of failed stuff in a row, and actually the Undead have managed to get themselves back together again. And so they might not choose to score here, although the two War Dancers are uh, on point, and um, we've got players that will be getting up and being uh, annoying. So. Okay, so he blocks here. Uh, presumably, I think he picks the ball up and then chooses to go score. And all of that has come about because we let him run past, we then applied loads of pressure to him, and he then had to score. So, what have we learned here? Well, one, don't bring the ball forward too fast, it's too soon. And if he had advanced on, started advancing on, let's say, turn four, rather than start advancing on turn one, um, maybe he would have scored on turn eight rather than scoring on turn five. All you need to do is work out where is your normal drive scoring timer, and then just, if that answer is four or five, then just wait the first four or five turns out, and just make it so it answers. the answer is turn eight. So, we'll see the setup, and what we've now got to do is score in four turns. I've got one re-roll, got four turns, so we just need to pick the ball up. Um, the best way of doing this is because he split his line of scrimmage up, um, we should try and knock over both mummies, we should try and knock over the zombie, and then just pick on a zombie to throw a blitz on. Um, if, of course, we can knock the, zombie, the mummies over, then all they're gonna do next turn is stand up. So it's a bit like, it's like a pseudo stun um, if you get to knock them over, because uh, they don't really do anything the following turn. Um, I don't like having the mummies on the line of scrimmage because they're just too easy to deal with, um, unless of course you uh, defend them really well. So a riot, that uh, gives me only three turns to score now. Um, we need to be a little bit more careful with our drive, um, and really we need to send some players into his half, just a little bit into his half, uh, to make sure that we can do something. So we follow up there to make sure we've got another two dice block. Now we do get the mummy down, and I shouldn't follow this up because there's no point facing um, two elves uh, against the mummy when you can just do it with one. Knock that over. Now I should run around the side here because we know we're going to block on this side. So don't do that, Andy. That's just not the right place at all, is it? Because you know you're going to block that way. And now you've left yourself based by three, three players. Um, now we can blitz here. And what I've, choos what I've chosen to do here is split up the team so that the undead have got to cover all these different threats. So I've got, I've pushed down the uh, left flank a little bit. We're still quite strong in the right. Um, and I need to bring the ball over to here. Because we know that we need to score quickly. So the ball needs to come up and be available to score. So turn seven, I can bring the ball to here. 
Um, and if we count backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I need to be on that rank there between the 12 and the eight um, next at the end of next turn. Doesn't matter where I am, but that's what I need to do. And the Udner team need to therefore defend that line on the pitch um, to stop me being able to score. So he right, quite rightly goes after the player that's further forward. Um, I do think he would have done better to base it though, um, because then I don't get to stand up for free. Notice the zombies charging forward. If I can run past the zombies now, these three are not going to be relevant in the rest of the drive. So um, I'm looking on the pitch for the most amount of space. So let's have a look on the pitch. Where is the most amount of space and how can I, um, how can I get it? Well, we could go over to the left flank um, and we could set up somewhere in between the ghoul and the zombie over here. Um, <clears throat> all we need to do is deal with this zombie. Or we could try and blitz the white and go and stand in the, uh, on the right flank over here. Um, or we could just try and blitz the ghoul and go and stand there. Uh, either way around, there's an awful lot of space in the backfield here, which is where I want to stand. So um, I can't actually remember what I choose to do, but that's what I should be, should be looking at, just making sure we get a lot of space into the backfield. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to go and stand up in the far left-hand corner. Dodge with the ball carrier is not ideal there. Uh, if it goes wrong, I don't win the uh, win the game. <clears throat> and now we're looking at trying to stall that uh, screen out the play. So I'm going to need to make two more dodge rolls. Uh, one in, in advance of the, uh, the ball carrier to make sure that it's safe, and then one uh, behind the ball carrier uh, to try and limit what can go on. Which is a little bit of a greedy turn seven, if I'm honest, because. Um, you only need to roll one something else, one again, and this drive does not play out like this. So uh, I'm going to take something away, which is, Ali, your turn seven was a bit greedy. There we get a push. Now, this is a very important place, and I've just, you've just seen where it goes. You cannot, cannot, cannot push it there, because um, what he will do is he'll block this and then open up the ability to be able to punch the uh, catcher. <clears throat> so there was, yeah, it had to go in one of these squares. Well, if you push it there, He's got an easy three plus dodge out. So it had to go there. Um, by rights, you could have actually said, Andy, don't do that. Um, but the trade-off is that if you get the white down, then he's gonna really struggle. And I don't and I think if you don't get the white down, it probably doesn't change too much. So uh, I chose to throw the block. There we go. Now, the undead will then play out their turn. Um, and presumably we will be able to score as the Wood Elves. So I'm going to skip forward through here. We'll not see the undead turn. Uh, we'll just see how it looked. Um, and then all I need to do is solve this. Um, so we throw, uh, a, he throws a one dice block. Um, we've got this, this guy free, so you can stand there and blitz the white and dodge away. Nice and easy to score. Just need to not roll double skulls into double skulls. There we go. Follow up, move this guy out of the way and score. Because there's no point trying to block one of these because it's two players tagging, so you've got to make the dodge. There we go. So that's the first of the two concepts, which is about turn management and seeing how you can control the game and therefore making sure that if you do control the game correctly, you will get the correct half time score. Um, while we're waiting for the second half to load up, um, I think it brings me on to something else I just want to very quickly talk about, uh, which is that we do offer, or I do offer, coaching sessions for people. If you're interested in a coaching session, there's a link to Discord in the chat below. All you need to do is message me on Discord, uh, and I'll talk to you that. Um, it's 20, charged at £20 a session. Sessions run for about 90 minutes. Um, and what I do is I talk to you in detail about some of the stuff we were talking about here, um, or whatever it is that you want to learn, whether that's one turning, um, cage diving, how to break a cage, um, yeah, pace on the drive, general positioning, you, you name it, I, I can talk to you about that topic. Um, and I also would just would like to ask you all um, that if you are one, looking at trying to support the channel, then yeah, please do um, click the, uh, the subscribe button on YouTube so that you don't miss any more of these videos. Or um, if you want to support it so I can make more of these videos and I can get some professional editing done, uh, please do uh, come along and give us a subscription on Twitch. Uh, it really does help. Um, so thank you very much for anyone who does choose to do that. Right, second half. 
So, we've marked the ball in 1-1. Um, now, we now have to make a decision, um, which is, do I think I can send my opponent over, definitely, and kind of be greedy and go and try to chase 3-1, or do I need to settle for what I've got, which is 1-1? Um, and judging by the way that we got some pressure on the ball, although it wasn't guaranteed, I don't think we're quite there yet with this team, and it's a fresh team. Um, so I'm just going to pause it for a second, and we're going to say that I'm going to play this game out, and I'm going to play for 2-1. So, concept here, 2-1. Knowing that my opponent would need to come and take the ball off me, uh, in the first couple of turns, best place for the ball. Can you work out where it is if, if we look at this pitch state? Uh, again, I'll put the answer to that question in the comments below. Where is the best place for the ball? Uh, if you want to pause the video for a second and have a think, uh, by all means. And the correct answer, of course, is somewhere down here uh, against the back line. Um, because then the ball is safe. I only need to try and start thinking about scoring on turn about turn six, because I think I can score with two turns probably fairly easily, maybe three turns at a push. So first five turns in this drive are just basically me messing around um, and just pretending like I'm going to go score with no actual reason of scoring. So the undead should, if they know this piece of information, ignore any scoring threats that I charge forward. So against a great coach, they probably would choose to ignore them. Um, but what they absolutely do need to do uh, is a concept that I'll talk to you about in coaching sessions, uh, which is I don't care what the offense does so long as they do something. And that, what I mean by that is they're not allowed to stand three, four squares off their end zone and do nothing uh, because you're playing into their hands. So you have to go and put pressure on the ball if the undead, uh, sorry, if the wood elves choose to go backwards. Um, so what I'm looking at doing here is kind of knock over the line of scrimmage. Well, no, I can't because it's now correctly together and it's also defended by players on the sides. So, um, what I'll do is I'll just pick something and I'll punch it. Uh, we'll faint up one of the sides a little bit. Uh, we'll maintain a, a good bit of strength on in the centre. The undead will then faint after it. I'll then switch to the left flank, and then I'll flip to the right, and so on and so forth. Um, um, but what the key thing that I will do is, or two key things, one, we'll probably maintain a strength in the centre on the halfway line to stop him charging past me, and two, we'll stay spread out so he can't base all of my elves. And the more I spread out, the more he spreads out, the easier it is for me to punch him and have a fight. Because if we have a fight on his terms, everyone stays together. I can't win. If we have a fight on my terms, where everyone's spread out, I win. So let's see if I can get him to spread out. So we'll pretend like we're going to go and score in two turns. Uh, this is an incorrect blitz. I should, of course, be blitzing with a ward answer. Uh, because I've got block, and I don't want to use a one in, roll a one in nine. Um, where is my little answer? Is there? Um, I think the reason I didn't is because I am looking to throw the ball with a war answer to generate a free star player point, and then um, this war answer is going to dodge off the line. So a little bit safe. This this guy needs to come across as well and, and defend the, the center. Take the ball backwards. Should have thrown from there, really. There's no point being as far forward as that. Um, and I've chosen to do something that uh, I've just said to you is, is probably not correct, uh, which is I've chosen to bring the ball forwards. And I am choosing to um, pretend like I'm going to go and score in two turns. And um, this is another way of playing it. It's not the textbook version. Uh, this is uh, me saying, hey, look, the ball is over here. Come and get it and then it's going to run away, and then it's going to run some more in a different direction, and so on and so on. Um, but look how the elves are all nice and spread out. The more we can spread out, the better it is. Um, this is okay because I can dodge into the four square, definitely, and I can probably dodge into this square. Um, so I know I can get my way out. Always look to have at least one exit. So the undead is starting to, uh, to go and take the bait. Um, and try and stop me scoring. Remember, we don't have any intention of scoring. And while this is going through, um, this is another concept I, I would I, I talk to people about, which is, um, start the turn. Can you fight your way out of the turn? Or do you need to dodge away? And that question is specifically aimed around, yeah, and set, I've said it in exactly the specific way I meant it. Can you fight your way out or do you have to dodge away? 
and let's look at this turn for a second. So before the ball goes away, in fact, I'll let the ball move. As you can see here, oh look, the ball's run away. There we go, pause. There we go. Right, so you'd look around the board and you work out whether or not the players can fight their way out or do they need to dodge. So starting with the ward answer in the bottom left hand corner, can he dodge his, can he fight his way out? Yeah, absolutely, he just needs a free assist. Have we got players on hand? Yes. So we know we need to put an assist in for that. Now up this guy, can he fight his way out? Well, yeah, sure, if we can get an assist in. Um, and it looks like we probably can. Um, can this guy fight his way out? Mm, probably not um, yet, uh, because it's strength three versus strength five. That'd be quite a lot of extra resource. Can this guy dodge his way out or fight? Yeah, he can fight. So we got dodge, fight, fight, fight. Um, and then it gets a little bit more complicated over here. So can you fight your way out of this? Yes, um, because there are three players basing two players. So if two players can block a player away and one player blitzes, you can get rid of all three players because you know now where your blitz is going to be. So I reckon the blitz for me is going to be up here so I can fight my way out of this. I can fight here, I can fight here, and I can fight here. Well, if I know the blitz is going to be up the north, I know that the, um, this guy is going to end up dodging. So um, I can now start planning my turn out. And you could probably plan out this turn and probably guess what I do. Just based on these questions, which is, can I fight my way out? Um, is the ball safe? Uh, what turn is it? Um, anyone who's had any coaching is probably now smiling uh, if you're watching this video. So let's see how I actually play this turn through. So this was the only elf that could realistically get there, so he had to go there. Uh, that provides me an assist. He was the only logical play player left to go and stand there. Uh, this is the next best move because I've got block. Um, and now we've got a choice. We've got two dice over here, we've got two dice on the left hand side. Now we've done that, we know where the blitz is going to be. You can probably guess who's going to throw the blitz. Um, notice that when we get knocked down, I try and leave things based. When we don't get knocked thing, knock, things knocked down, I don't leave them based. You can probably guess where this guy moves to now. There we go. Um, and then we'll throw the block in the top corner and then we'll dodge away. goes and provides the assist because he's going to do two things he's going to dodge away from that and he's going to throw the block and look every time we've knocked someone over we've left them based so he doesn't have a choice about what happens to them every time we didn't we pushed them away and didn't didn't leave our players based um, the next thing is think about it from the undead perspective if we know just pause it so the camera keeps jumping around look at how much threats on the ball it's 10 10 do i need to move the ball sorry my turn 11 do i need to move the ball or can it stay there um, absolutely can stay there. So he needs to come and provide some threat. And look where all the players that can provide threat are. They're all the way up there. So it's two turns, one to get here, one to go and provide threat. And realistically, it's three turns because all I have to do is drop back a little bit and there is no threat. So if the undead want me to not um, uh, keep doing this to him, he needs to go and push players, at least two of them, into the position where he can go and threaten me. Um, what he's playing for is the attrition game, which is that every turn he's hopefully that a mighty blow player will remove one of mine. Um, however, what's also happening is he's basing me up and so I'm looking for the players that can fight their way out and if I can find a way to fight my way out, um, I absolutely take it. Okay, so same question again, you look over here, can I fight my way out? Yes, easily. Um, can I fight my way out? Well, I just did. <coughs> um, we'll run away from the mummy. Um, we could even blitz one of the mummies down if I wanted to, because I can bring enough assists in to do it. It would mean that I won't need to dodge my way away. Um, as it is, I take, choose to take two of the zombies out, because I can blitz one, and then I can block the other. It's also given me wider pitch control, um, so that yeah, it looks like... Um, I am choosing to now push down the left-hand side. I have no intention of pushing down the left-hand side. Again, knocked over, so it's left-based. Didn't knock over, wasn't left-based. Did knock over, is based. Um, and we're going to dodge away. And the order of dodging away here is dodge away from the things that are most scary first, 
and then dodge away from the things that are least scary last. And last thing just to it just to take note of is look at the um the positioning of, of the elves. They're all really spread out so that when he chooses to come and base me on a one-to-one -one basis or a two-to-one -one basis, um, I can pick my battles, I'm choosing which ones we're fighting, and he's having to respond to me. And this is all happening because the ball is completely tucked away and safe, and he has got no pressure on the ball. I haven't got nothing I need to worry about. If these players all became connected and he charged at the ball, then we would have an entirely different game of cat and mouse on our hands. And really, this is far too aggressive. I don't need to do this. Um, but what I am doing now is trying to farm up some star player points. So not only am I trying to play around, I'm now also trying to level up um, the catcher. So he'll try and throw three passes. So I've upped my level of difficulty um, to just to make it harder. Seen it at the time because there's starting to be a box shaped form here. Uh, which might mean, of course, we could serve something. Possibly that cool. So our opponent now chooses to go and start basing things again. Uh, you can probably guess what's going to happen to these elves, right? Some of them are going to dodge away, some of them are going to fight. Um, but what they're not all going to do is stay there. So, we'll pause this for a second. Now, um, I don't think I played this turn correctly at, uh, in hindsight. Because um, the first question I should ask myself is, is the ball safe? The answer is absolutely not. Um, so what I need to do and do is make the ball safe. Um, the catcher, therefore, the best way to be safe is just to go and step away. And I can, if I want to, throw the ball with the ward answer. Um, I don't think that's what I have in mind. I think I have in mind that I want to throw the ball twice more with the catcher. So I'm probably going to do something which is a little bit naughty. But the correct play here is take these two players and go and run away. Use these guys as a screen. Um, and probably try and surf the white over in the top corner. Um, because if we get a block on the diagonal and push him, he can go into this square that's highlighted out on your screen here. Um, and then we can dodge away the player that's been mocked by the zombie and the mummy. Blitz the white off and that gets me an extra removal, which gives me more space to play around with. And he can probably then finish his turn by going and standing near the ghoul and having two dice over there. Let's see what I actually do. Yeah. No, that's not, that not the correct play. Which for an educational video is probably not the right video for me to be picking, but um, this is just a, this is actually an insight into my actual overall play style. Um, and sometimes on stream, uh, the chat do enjoy um, watching me go, oh dear, that's gone wrong um, in my um, my own special way. Um, there we go, dodging away the ward answer. Um, but when it does work, what it does mean is that we can then win games um, with a maximum reward. So that gets rid of the white. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can just go for it to get back here. So not making the go for it will make the dodge. So you can run away and you can run away. And again, we're still nice and spread out. This is going all right. And it's probably at this point worth thinking about how on earth would you fix this? If you are the undead, how would you fix this? Um, and the problem with this now is that now we're getting to the point where it's the crunch time. It's turn 14 for me. And if the, un if the Wood Elves score now, then the Undead have got a bit of a pro They've got a bit of a problem. They've got to try and tie it up. And the best way to put the pressure on them now is you need to go and just attack the cage and make it do something. Um, ignore the Elves in the backfield and just go and charge into them. While still being able to get into range of the Elves in the backfield, however, because otherwise I'll stand about there with the ball on turn 14 then stall it out on 15 and you'll lose. That this needed a completely different playstyle from the undead in the first three, four turns, because otherwise um, this is what's going to happen. It's turn 13, I don't need to attack just yet. Um, so uh, we can start thinking about what we want to 
carry, carry on thinking about what we want to punch. Um, we've got a two dice block over here, so we'll punch that um, Zombo. Throw the ball with a war dancer, that gets him to four, uh, five points. Um, we'll hand it back to the, uh, the war dancer. And I actually should have dodged here first. So that war dancer is now on five points. So we know, we know, well I know, that I'm going to throw that dodge next, uh, that, that next. And we need to dodge away here. And we'll start just running away from the mummy because it's turn 14 and look where the mummy is. Uh, we'll let that slide. And that's it. This is this is just how to play this turn out. Um, and, and pretty much, I think this is um, a, a good good sort of lesson in terms of how to uh, um, to control a drive. Uh, something does in quite interestingly happen, I think, uh, in about two turns time. So uh, do watch the rest of this through. But while I'm while that's happening, um, the other thing I wanted to just let you all know, which is for people who do play tabletop, um, and as I discussed earlier, I play a lot of it, so maybe we'll meet at some point. Um, we um, do offer for our subscribers on Twitch a free uh, tabletop figure, uh, which is a Gribo Games model. Uh, link to Gribo Games is in the description below if you want to see what those figures are. Um, there's a Dark Elf Blitzer for people who subscribe on Twitch uh, for 12 months as a way of us saying thank you very much. Um, and for 24 month subscribers, um, we then give them a uh, human ogre, which you can use um, for an ogre team or yeah, anything that has an ogre inside it. Um, and the, t the models are absolutely very, very smart um, uh, and well worth uh, collecting. Um, if you do collect uh, table top figures, um, the other reason I brought that up was because um, Grebo Games have just launched an orc team. Um, and you might be interested in looking at that, the, uh, the Savage Orcs. Um, they are absolutely spectacular. Uh, some of the best models out there. So do go and check them out. There we go. So still spreading out my tech players, keep moving them around from one area of the field to another, keep moving them, um, keep dodging away when we need to. Uh, something that did happen in that turn, which I kind of deliberately overlooked a little bit, but I will um, bring to your attention uh, was that I did use my reroll. So turn 15 and 16 for me are going to be a little bit on the exciting side. Um, and I used the reroll because I was throwing vanity passes with war dancers. Um, something that my chat do find rather amusing um, and not what I would recommend you were doing um, unless you're absolutely certain that it won't go, it won't hurt you if it goes wrong. And it does bite. Um, spoiler alert. Okay. While we're playing this turn through, what you could use your time to do is think about um, how you, your turn 15 needs to be um, a turn that you set up your turn 16 so that there is no issue with uh, your score. So where do you want to go and put the ball on turn 15? On turn 16, you can just zip it in and score. If you're throwing dice, you might have made a bit of a mistake. And the undead actually do quite a nice job of pulling this back round again because he hasn't left me very much space to run into. If we look at it right now, um, the catcher can only get eight, can only get eight squares. Um, and I don't have many spaces to run into. If I run into the top left-hand corner, sorry, if I run into the top right, um, we'll pause it here. Uh, if I run into the top right, the two mummies are both definitely in contact and they're both strength five and they're both a problem. So I don't really want to go into the top right-hand corner. Equally, um, let's just let that go away. If I run into the top left-hand corner, um, there's more space, but I've got to get rid of this zombie and I've got to throw a block. And I haven't got a re-roll, and I could roll a double skull. Luckily, of course, I don't. But um, you never know what's going to happen around the corner, and I, I absolutely I could have re rolled a double skull there, and I would have only had myself to blame. Um, but the idea here of bringing that was that the ball carrier needed to run through that square, um, and now he's more than eight squares, sorry, it's less than eight squares from the end zone. At one, two, three, four, five, six, we've got six squares from the end zone, which means that I can run two squares sideways and six squares forward, or six squares forward. So I've got quite a wide angle of attack to run into um, uh, to be able to score. We can score anywhere from this corner here, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. So we can score anywhere from there all the way out to the end of the wide, the wide zone. Um, and the undead will struggle to screen all of that off. Uh, the best thing for the undead to do here 
is to try and make a really wide screen and make me have to roll some dice. Without a re-roll, maybe it goes wrong. So he's choosing to attack us. Uh, I think this is to try and get pressure on the ball. So now the ball carrier has to dodge. It's good. It make me makes me roll dice. Yep, I like that. Block with a ghoul, block with a white, um, and at least I'm going to have to roll some dice. Probably not many, but I'm going to have to roll some. Um, now we've got a problem. We've got, to, we've got to roll some dice. Fortunately, it's just a 2 plus dodge with dodge, a 2 dice block with block, and then a 2 plus dodge with dodge. What can possibly go wrong? Nothing, but it nearly did. So there we go, guys. Um, I hope that was useful for you. Um, if you did enjoy it, please like, we leave like, subscribe on YouTube. Um, maybe we get to come and see you on Twitch. Uh, join our Discord. Uh, there's an awful lot of Blood Bowl chat going on there. There's maybe nearly a thousand people on our Discord now. So if you've only got any Blood Bowl questions, come and say hello. Um, I'll answer almost all PMs um, pretty much the same day. Um, other than that, thank you very much for watching. Um, and I'll probably see you in the next video. Thank you very much.